from San Mateo, California, it's theCUBE, covering SnapLogic Innovation Day 2018. Brought to you by SnapLogic. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're at the crossroads. That's 92 and 101 in the Bay Area. If you've been through it, uh, you've had time to take, take a minute and look at all the buildings because traffic's usually not so great around here. Uh, but there's a lot of great software companies that come through here. Um, it's interesting, I always think back of the Siebel building that went up and now that's Rokutan, who we all know from the, the Warrior jerseys, the very popular Japanese retailer, but that's not why we're here. We're here to talk to SnapLogic. They're doing a lot of really interesting things and they have been in data, and now they're doing a lot of interesting things in integration and we're excited to have a many time Cube alum. He's Greg Benson, let me get the title right, Chief Scientist at SnapLogic and of course a professor at University of San Francisco. Greg, great to see you. Great to see you, Jeff. So I think last time we saw you was at um, Flink Forward, right? Interesting open source project, data at Move. So this, this it, the open source technologies and the technologies available for you guys to use just continue to evolve at a crazy breakneck speed. Yeah, no, it is, it is you know, open source is, in general, as you know, has really revolutionized, you know, all of computing, you know, back to, you know, starting with, with Linux and what that's done for, for the world, right? Uh, and, uh, and, you know, in, in one sense, it's a boon, but it's also uh, introduces a, a challenge, right? Right, Because right. how do you choose? And then even when you do choose, you know, do you have the expertise to harness it? And, you know, the, the early uh, social companies really, you know, leveraged off of Hadoop and Hadoop technology to, to, to drive their business and their objectives. Um, and now we've seen a lot of that technology be commercialized and have a lot of service around it. And um, SnapLogic is, uh, is doing that as well. We, we help reduce the complexity and make a lot of this open source technology available to our customers. Right. So uh, I want to talk about a lot of different things. One of the things is Iris. So Iris is your guys' leverage of machine learning and artificial intelligence to help make integration easier. Did I get that right? That's correct, yeah. I Iris is the umbrella term for sort of everything that we do with machine learning and how we use it to enhance the user experience. Right. And one, one, way to, one way to think about it is uh, when you're interacting with our product, we've, we've, we've made uh, the SnapLogic Designer, uh, you know, web-based UI, drag and drop interface to construct these, uh, these integration pipelines. We, we connect these things called snaps, right? It's like building with Legos right, to, to, right. to build out these, these transformations on your data. Uh, and when you're doing that, when you're interacting with the, the designer, and we would like to believe that we've made it sort of one of the, the simplest uh, interfaces to do this type of work. But even with that, there are many times where you have to make decisions, right? Like what type of transformation do you do next? How do you configure that transformation? If you're talking to an Oracle database, how do you configure it? Um, you know, what's your credentials if you talk to Salesforce? If I'm doing a transformation on data, which fields do I need? What kind of operations do I need to apply to those fields? So as you can imagine, there's lots of situations as you're building out these data integration pipelines to make decisions. And one way to think about IRIS is IRIS is there to help reduce the complexity, help reduce what kind of decision you have to make at any point in time. So it's contextually aware of what you're doing and at the at that moment in time, based on mining you know, our thousands of existing pipelines and scenarios in which SnapLogic has been used, we leverage that to train models to help make recommendations so that you can speed through you know, whatever tasks that you're trying to do as quickly as possible. Right, it's such an important piece of information because if I'm doing that integration project using the tool, um, I don't have the experience of the vast thousands and thousands, and actually you guys are doing now what a trillion um, uh, document moves last month. I, I just don't have that expertise. You guys have the expertise, and truth be told, as unique as I think I am, and as unique as I think my business process are, probably a lot of them are pretty much the same as a lot of other people that are hooking up, you know, Salesforce to Oracle, or hooking up, you know, Marketo to to their their CRM. So. You guys are really taking advantage of that using the AI and the ML to help guide me along, which is probably a pretty high probability prediction of what my next move's going to be. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, the, you know, back in the day, we used to, you know, consider like you might be heard of like wizards, right? And these right, sorts of things right. that would walk you through. And 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 really, that was um, that wasn't, you know, you know, it seemed intelligent, but it wasn't really intelligence or machine learning, right? It was really just hard coded facts or heuristics that hopefully would be right for certain situations. Yeah, the difference today is, yeah, we're using real data 
you know, you know, you know, gigabytes of metadata that um, that we can use to train our models. And so, the nice thing about that, it's not hard coded; it's adaptive. So it's adaptive both for sort of new customers, but also for existing customers. We have we have you know customers that have hundreds of people that just use SnapLogic, right, to get their business objectives done. And as they're building new pipelines, as they are putting in new expressions, right? We are learning that from for them within their organization. So like, you know, their coworkers the next day they can come in and then they get the advantages of all the all the, you know, um, intellectual work that was done to figure something out right, will right. be learned and then will be made available through 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 Iris. Right. I love this concept of operationalizing the machine learning and, and the augmented intelligence. So how do you apply it? Don't just talk about it, don't give it a name of some dead smart person, but actually apply it in, in, to, to an application that you start to see the benefit, and that's really what Iris is all about. So what what's changed the most in the last year since you launched it? So, uh, you know, so one thing I'll say, the, the first most, uh, the, the most interesting thing that we discovered when we, when we first launched Iris, and, and I should say, um, one of the first technologies, Iris technologies that we introduced was something called the Integration Assistant. And this was um, an assistant that would make, uh, make recommendations of the next snap as you're building out your pipeline, so the next transformation or the next connector. And before we launched it, before we, uh, you know, we did lots of experimentation with different machine learning models, and we, um, we did different training to try to get the best accuracy possible. And what we really thought was that this was going to be most useful for the new user, right? Somebody who hasn't really used the product, and, um, and it turns out when we looked at our data, and we looked at sort of how it got used, it turns out that yes, new users did use it, but existing or um, or very skilled users were using it just not, um, as much, if not more, because it turned out that it was so good at making recommendations that it was like a shortcut. Like even if they knew the product really well, it's still actually a little more work to go through our catalog of 400 or plus snaps and pick something out when if it's just sitting right there and saying, hey, the next thing you need to do is you don't even have to think, you just have to click and it's right there, then it just speeds up right. the expert user as well. Right. So that was an interesting sort of revelation about machine learning and our application of it. In terms of what's changed over the last year, we've, um, we've done a number of things. Uh, both the, um, probably the, the, the operationalizing it so that we get, you know, instead of you know, training off a snapshot, we're, we're now training on a continuous basis so we get that adaptive learning that I was talking about earlier. Right, right. Uh, the other thing that we have done is, and this is kind of getting into the weeds, but um, we were using a decision tree model, which is a, is a type of machine learning um, algorithm, and we switched to neural nets now. So we use neural nets to achieve higher accuracy and, and also uh, a more adaptive learning experience. The neural net allowed us to do to bring in sort of like this organizational information so that your recommendations would be more tailored to your specific organization. Uh, the other thing that we're just on the cusp of uh, releasing is in the integration assistant, we were working on sort of a sort of from beginning to end type recommendation where you were kind of working forward. But what we found is in talking to people in the field and our customers who use the product, is there's all kinds of different ways that people interact with the product, right? They might know where they want the data to go, right? right. And then they might want to work backwards. Or they might know that the most the most important thing I need this to do is join some data, right? So like when you're solving a puzzle, like you know, with the family, right? You you either work on the edges or right. you put you put some clumps in the middle and you kind of work to get to. And that's that puzzle pop solving sort of uh, metaphor is where we're moving the integration assistant, so that you can kind of fill in the pieces that you know, and then we help you work in any direction to sort of make the puzzle complete. Right. And so that that is that that's something that we've been adding to. We start we recently started recommending um, based on your context, like uh, the most common sources and destinations that you might need, but we're also about to introduce this idea of working backwards and then also working from the inside out. Right, and then we just had Gaurav on and he's talking about kind of the next iteration of the vision is to get to autonomous. Correct. To get to where the thing not only can guess what you want to do, uh, has a pretty good idea, but it actually starts to basically do it for you, and I guess it would flag you if there's some strange thing or needs an assistant, and really we have almost a full autonomy in this integration effort. Yeah, so, I mean, yes, we want to get vision. to... vision. No, 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 and, you know, like, you know, I, and I'm the one that has to make that vision a reality, yeah, right? Yeah. So, uh, so, 
you know, um, yes, the, the, the way I like to explain it is, is that customers or users have a concept of what they want to achieve. And that concept is, you know, as a thought in their head. And the goal is how to get that concept or thought, right, into something that is machine executable, right? What's the, what's the pathway to achieve that? Or, uh, or you know, if, if somebody's using SnapLogic for a lot of their organizational operations or for their, for their data integration, right, we can start looking at what you're doing and make recommendations about, about other things that you should or might be doing, right? right so right. it's kind of like this two-way thing where we can give you some suggestions, but we also, you know, people want know what they want to do conceptually, but how do we how do we make that realizable as something that's executable? So, um, so we're, we're I'm working on a number of research projects that is getting us closer right. to that vision. And um, one of them that I've been very excited about is we're working a lot with NLP, natural language processing, uh, like like many companies and other right. products are 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 investigating for. Our use in particular is in a couple of different ways. Um, to be sort of concrete, we've been working on a research project in which rather than you know having to know like the name of a snap, because right now you get this thing called a snap catalog, and like I said, 400 plus snaps, right? To go through the whole list, it's pretty long, okay? Um, you can start to type a name, and yeah, it'll limit it, whatnot, but you still have to know kind of exactly what that snap is called. Right, right. What, what we're doing is we're applying machine learning in order to allow you to either speak or type uh, what the intention is of what you're looking for. Right, like right. I want to parse a CSV file. Now we have a file reader and we have a CSV parser, but if you just typed in parse a CSV file, it may not find right. what you're looking for. But we're trying to take sort of the human description and then connect that with the actual snaps that you might need to complete your task. So that's one thing we're working on. Um, I have two more. The other, okay. the, the second one is a little bit more uh, ambitious, but we have some preliminary uh, preliminary work at, that demonstrates this idea of actually saying or typing what you want an entire pipeline to do. Okay, so I might say I want to read data from Salesforce. I want to filter out only records from the last week, and then I want to put those records into Redshift. And if you were to just say or type what I just said, we would give you. A, a pipeline that maybe isn't entirely complete, but working and allows you to evolve it from there. Right, so you didn't right. have to go through all the steps of finding each individual snap and connecting them together. So that's this is still very early on, but we have some exciting results. Um, and then, you know, the last thing that we're working on with NLP is there, there in SnapLogic, we have a nice UI and it's really good. There, a lot of the heavy lifting in building these pipelines though, is in the actual manipulation of the data. And when you act, to actually manipulate the data, you need to construct expressions. And expressions in SnapLogic, we, we have a JavaScript expression language. And so you, you have to write these expressions to do operations, right? Um, one of our next goals is to use natural language to help you describe what you want those expressions to do and then generate those expressions for you. So right. we're, this is uh, the way, you know, to get at that vision, you know, we have to chisel. Like we right. have to, we have to right. break down the, the, the barriers on each one of these and then, you know, collectively this will get us closer to that vision of truly autonomous integration. Right. But what's so cool about it, and again, you say autonomous, I can't help but think autonomous vehicles. And we had a great interview with the guy at the autonomous vehicle show. He said, you know, if you, if you have an accident in your, in your car, you learn, the person that you had the accident learns a little bit, and maybe the insurance adjuster learns a little bit. But when you have an accident in an autonomous vehicle, everybody learns, the whole system learns. Right. So that, that learning is shared, you know, orders of magnitude greater to greater benefit to the whole. And, and that's really where you guys are sitting in this cloud situation. You've got all this integration going on with customers. You have all this translation and movement of data. Everybody benefits from the learning that's gained by everybody's participation. I think that's what is so exciting and why it's such a great accelerator to how things used to be done before by yourself in your little company, you know, kind of coding way, trying to solve a problem. It's very, very different kind of paradigm to leverage all that information of actual use cases, how, you know, what's actually happening with the platform. So it puts you guys in a pretty good situation. Uh, I, I, I completely agree. And I, just uh, to sort of Another analogy is, um, look, we're not going to 
we're not going to get rid of programmers anytime soon, right? However, um, programming is a complex human endeavor, right? Uh, however, the Snap pipelines are kind of like programs, right? And what we're doing in our domain, in our space, is trying to achieve automated programming, right? So that so that you're right, like as you said, like learning from the experience of others, you know, learning from the crowd, learning from the mistakes, right? And capturing that knowledge in a way that when somebody is presented with a new task, we can, you know, either make it very quick for them to achieve that or actually provide them with exactly what they need. Right, right. right? And so that, yeah, it's very exciting. Yeah. So we're running out of time. Before I let you go, I wanted to tie back to, to, to your professor job. Sure. Um, kind of how do you leverage that? How does that, you know, kind of benefit what's going on here at SnapLogic? Because you know, you've obviously been doing that for a long time. It's important to you. Bill Schmarzo, a great fan of the Cubes, deemed him the, uh, the dean of big data a couple of years ago. He's now starting to teach. So there's a lot of benefits to being involved in academe. So, so what are you doing there in academe, and how does it tie back to what you're doing here in SnapLogic? Sure. Uh, so, so yeah, I've, I've been a professor for 20 years at the University of San Francisco, and um, I've long done research in operating systems and distributed systems, parallel computing, programming languages. Uh, and I had the opportunity to work with Snap, start working with SnapLogic in 2010, and it was this, you know, it was this great experience of okay, I've done all this academic research, I've built systems, I've written research papers, and SnapLogic provided me with an opportunity to actually put a lot of this stuff in practice and work with real-world data. You know, it's 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 much different, you know. And I think a lot of people on both sides of the industry academia sort of fence will will tell you that. You know, a lot of the a lot of the real interesting stuff in computer science happens in industry because a lot of what we do with computer science is practical, right? Right. And so, um, so I started off, you know, bringing in sort of my expertise and you know working on innovation and doing research projects, which I continue to do today. And at USF, we happen to have sort of a, a vehicle already set up. All of our students, both undergraduates and graduates, have to do a capstone. Uh, senior project or master's project in which we uh, pair up the students with um, industry sponsors to work on a project and you know this is a time in their careers where you know they they don't have a lot of professional experience but they have a lot of knowledge right and so we we bring the students in and um, we carve out a project idea and the uh, students under sort of under my mentorship and working with the engineering team sort of work towards the whatever project we set up um, those projects have uh, resulted in numerous innovations now that are in the product. The most recent big one is Iris came out of out of one of these research projects. Oh, it was a machine learning project about started um, around three years ago, um, and uh, and we have you know I have continuously have lots of other projects in the work in the works. On the flip side, um, my experience at SnapLogic. Uh, has allowed me to bring sort of this industry experience back to the classroom, um, both both in terms of explaining to students and understanding what their expectations will be when they when they get out into industry, but also being able to make the examples sort of more real and relevant um, in the classroom. So it's real for me. It's been uh, it's been a great relationship that um, that's benefited both those roles. Right. Well, it's it's such a big and important driver to what goes on in the Bay Area. USF doesn't get enough credit. Clearly, Stanford and Cal get a lot. They bring in a lot right. of smart people every year. They don't leave. They love the weather. And, <laughs> uh, you know, it's, it is really a significant driver, not to mention all the innovation that happens and cool startups that come out. Well, Greg, thanks for uh, taking a few minutes out of your busy day to uh, sit down with us. Thank you, Jeff. All right. He's Greg. I'm Jeff. You're watching The Cube from SnapLogic in San Mateo, California. Thanks for watching.